Hey everybody, it's Shisai here, and today I am bringing you a remake of the video I posted about two to three weeks ago. This time around, I am reading off of a script rather than speaking what's on my mind as I go, so hopefully I'll be a bit more coherent rather than rambling and going off on unrelated tangents. So, let's get started. As I said in the last video, I will be arguing for the concept of marching band being a sport, and those who say otherwise are just ignoring pretty clear evidence. So, let's look at the evidence I have gathered to show what I mean. First, let's take a look at the definition of what a sport is. According to dictionary.com, a sport is an athletic activity requiring skill or physical prowess and often of a competitive nature, as racing, baseball, tennis, golf, bowling, wrestling, boxing, hunting, fishing, etc. Let's break down this definition into three main points for this argument. The requirement of skill, physical prowess, and competitive nature. I've heard many stories of people who look at what marching bands do and say that we're just walking around while playing music. There is far more to marching band than that. My band director would always tell us that it's marching band, not walking band, whenever we weren't using the correct technique. And that statement truly does hold a lot of water. We are not walking, we are marching in a specific style. This style allows us to march around the field while playing our instruments with good musicality. Your core has to be strong so your instrument doesn't move around when you're marching. You have to have a specific step size so everyone can go the same amount of distance and look like a cohesive unit while doing so. And you have to hold your instrument up at a certain angle so you're not playing into the ground and facing the crowd. That can be a lot harder said than done for certain instruments. Trumpets and flutes have an easy time holding their horns up at the correct angle because their instruments just don't weigh as much. But for other instruments, such as mellophones and baritones, we have to hold our instruments in the same position as trumpets, but because our instruments are a lot larger, they are by proxy heavier and harder to hold up. But that doesn't matter, as you have to hold up your instrument at the right angle for your entire performance, getting very few breaks to shake out your arms and then relax them. There were even times during practice where my section leader had to tell me to lower my horn angle because I was overcompensating and wanted to make sure I had a good horn angle. When it comes to step size, our director told us that everyone's step size had to be about 22 inches. Average height people and tall people had no trouble with this as average height people would just have it feel like a normal walking step and taller people would have a step size just shorter than their normal walking step. But short people would have to have a much larger step size than normal and that usually doesn't pose a big issue until you have movements in a show where you have to move a really long distance in a short amount of time. It can be hard because every one's step sizes become a lot larger, but especially for short people. Maybe what I'm saying is difficult to comprehend, so to show you what I mean, here is a clip from the opener of our show from my sophomore year of high school. I circled the general area I am on the field to show you where I started off, and this clip shows how far we had to go. We had to go from about the 15 yard line of the field and have to make it to about the 35 yard line. That's about 20 yards and only 16 counts, which was really fast and it was pretty difficult to get right when we were learning this movement. So as you saw in that clip, there can be instances in shows where people have to go a large distance in a short amount of time, which with the step size requirements can be fairly difficult for several people. That put together with having to keep your instrument up at a certain angle and having your core stay strong so your horn stays stable poses an interesting challenge. Also, when we are learning all of this important information, the step size, the core strength, the specific marching technique, we're doing this at week-long camps during the hot summer. My band had two camps every summer, one in June and one in July. In June, that is when we would usually teach all the freshmen and the other newcomers how to march, and when we all start learning the music for our opener. The days ran from 9 o'clock to about 3 o'clock every day, and then in July, that's when things really ramped up. We continued marching practice in the morning, then we would move on to learning our show, and after lunch, we'd go to music sectionals, and then after that, we'd go back outside to start putting everything together. Music and marching. And like I said, this is in July. It's in the middle of summer, so most days are extremely hot and downright miserable at points. This also applies to the first few after-school practices. 
It's the end of summer, so temperatures can still be pretty dang high. And then when it moves to winter, suddenly you have to shift from wearing shorts, tank tops, and loads of sunscreen every day to jackets, long pants, and loads of layers. Sometimes it can be extreme summer heat one day and Antarctic weather the next, especially in Colorado. But when you're putting on your last show at the end of the season, you will look back and think, wow, all that hard work, it really was worth it. And now we can talk about competitions. Most high school marching bands compete every year. I don't have much personal experience with this side of marching band as my band didn't compete regularly because we were a very big band in terms of normal high school band size. My senior year, we had around 170 to 180 people. Logistically speaking, it's just straight up unrealistic for us to compete on a regular basis. The cost for food, buses, it's just not a real realistic option for our band. But most high school bands do indeed compete, sometimes on a weekly basis. And from the one competition my band did end up going to my senior year, I can say that it was really nice and entertaining to see fellow marching band kids show off all the hard work they put into their show for the whole year that far, thus far. So, based on what I've mentioned in relation to the requirement of a certain skill set, the physical exertion slash prowess put forth, and the competitive nature for most bands, I would find it hard to make an argument against marching band being a sport. Everything about marching band fits the definition I read off earlier, so why do people not consider marching band a sport? I just, I don't understand. Anyway, that will be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as a whole and the improvement from the last one. If you'd like to see more irregular content from me, consider subscribing, and if you'd like to see more of my art, like what I showed via background speed paints in this video, head over to my DeviantArt and Twitter. Links will be provided in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.